Hey, my name is Austin Zhang. I'm a saxophonist in New York City, and I'm really, really concerned about uh, the state of our music right now because last night I just heard that the, the beloved music venue, The Blue Whale in Los An Angeles, uh, just closed down permanently. In New York City here, we just lost uh, our beloved jazz standard a few weeks ago. And I'm talking to my peers and even some of my mentors, and I just realized it's a really hard time. And I'm asking myself, like, what is the, you know, if I want this music, obviously, to continue and for us to survive this whole thing, um, what is the most use, how, how can I be more useful and help make that, ensure that happens? Um, and I could keep posting my music and my saxophone playing and my transcriptions, but it struck me that what a lot of musicians really need is literally more money in their pockets and more business sense and entrepreneurial sense. And I think this is something I can really help with a lot, not because I'm a finance guru or anything, but I know the basics and my mom has, has been in banking for decades. My older brother, he runs a multi-million dollar tech company. Uh, and so my whole family life growing up is just, people are talking about money, money, money. We had dinner conversations about investing and I've had some experience doing it myself. Um, so. And it just struck me as I'm talking to a lot of my peers that a lot of you people who are younger, you don't know this, even just the basics yet. And, you know, disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not a professional doing this, but this is this is really the basic, basic stuff that should should have been taught to you in schools. Uh, every American should know about this. Every artist should know about this because it's going to help you not be one of those tragic jazz masters who need to start GoFundMe to pay your bills when you're 80 or 70 or 60 or 50 for that matter. You know, it's really tragic that people who have contributed so much artistically are having so much trouble financially. Um, so I, I want I want to help my peers a little bit. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about just compound interest. Um, don't run away. Compound interest is not is not multi-level marketing. It's not um, some voodoo get rich quick scheme. It's the it's the power that every business person, uh, responsible personal finance person, every investor has taken advantage of since the dawn of time. Right? Albert Einstein called compound interest the most powerful force in the universe. And I think as artists and humble musicians who you know we don't like talking about money, but we need to be taking advantage of this in order to ensure the survival of our art, right? Um, so let's talk about average stock market return over the long term, right? So here I've literally just Googled average long term stock market return. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, manufacturing numbers. The average annual return since uh, adopting 500 stocks into the in in index, uh, the S&P 500, uh, in 1957 through 2018 is roughly 8%. So 8% is your average long-term stock market return. I've seen that number as high as 10%, uh, as low as 7%. Um, usually, usually 6% uh, is kind of low. I've even seen people say 12%. It, the discrepancy comes from when you're averaging. Some people are averaging over 20 years. Some people are averaging over 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Uh, this one, this number is averaging over um, from from this range. I'm not going to do the math, um, right? So here's the thing to understand about the stock market: if you do not panic and sell too soon, uh, and you keep your money invested in the market. Uh, in an index fund like the S&P 500 or a Vanguard index fund or something like that. I'll explain what that is uh, later on. You will not lose money over a 30, 40 per period time. It has never happened. Historically speaking, that is as safe as, as bonds or a savings account. You, if you keep your money invested and you do not touch it for the long run, you will not lose money. So... You know, I know a lot of people, they, they say like stocks, oh, they're, they're crazy, your money could be gone tomorrow. And that's, that's true if, to some extent. But if you're invested in the S&P 500 um, or a similar index fund, which again, I'll explain soon, um, your money's not going to turn to zero tomorrow. Uh, and over the long run, it will make money unless, the only unless is it, literally if America fails, you know, if... If the S&P 500 falls to zero, 
um, which it didn't do in the Great Depression. It didn't do during the, the coronavirus. It didn't do during any time. And by the way, these, yeah, then literally the world will collapse. <laughs> so I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, and if you do, good luck. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, so your money will grow at this rate uh, over the long term. If you, uh, by contrast, if you have mattress money, money just sitting your, in your checking account or cash literally in your mattress, um, you're going to lose 2 to 3% every year due to inflation. Inflation being your money is worth less every year because the Fed keeps printing more. Um, and I think that number is actually going to be much higher now that we're printing so much money for uh, the stimulus packages, right? Uh, so for the average uninitiated person who doesn't know anything about compound interest, these numbers seem pretty small, 8%, 2%, looks like whatever. Um, but I, I'll show you why Albert Einstein said this is the, the most powerful force in the universe by just using a super basic uh, compound interest calculator. This is very standard. They all give the same numbers. This is just the first one that came up on Google. And I'm going to show you why you really need to do this right now if you're 20 years old or 30 years old or literally today. Uh, if you invest $1 and you're 20 years old and you cash it out when you're 65, uh, 45 years from now, which is the average uh, age for retirement, and we take that 8% growth number that we got from Google, $1 when you're retired is worth 32x. So you might be thinking, oh, well, $32, that's not a lot of money. Um, but think about the growth. Excuse me. So we invested $1 and didn't invest anything for the rest of our life. <laughs> uh, and it grew by 32x. Imagine if that's 100, 1,000, 10,000, $100,000 contributed, or even a million dollars contributed. And then it grows by 32x. That is a, that's, a, that's a ludicrous amount of money, and it's the same force um, that will ensure you aren't one of those tragic jazz heroes who have to um, have to make GoFundMe to pay your bills when you're older. You know, this is this type of growth is going to be what um, it's it's how millionaires are made, right? Millionaires are you know less made by um, crazy lucrative cryptocurrency and things. There are people who do that, but the average millionaire is made by investing a little bit of your paycheck, a little bit of your gig money uh, every month over a long period of time and taking advantage of compound interest. Most, most people will not make a million dollars from their job or from their gigs over the course of their life, but if you take advantage of 32x growth over 45 years, it's, it's more than possible. In fact, it should be the, it should be the standard. Right. And so by contrast, we, we said you were 20 years old. By contrast, if you invest this month, this one dollar when you're 30 years old, 10 years less time of growth. And we calculate that your your growth is less than half. So that's why it's so important to start today. Right. Because these later years of growth, the longer you're invested in the market, um, the the you know the graph goes like this the distance between your growth and the amount of money you've actually contributed just skyrockets in those later years uh and that comes around year year 40 where year 40 year 50 uh 45 um that's why it's so important that this message gets out there for musicians um and i think this is also an important mu message for your spending you know say you know you're, you're thinking about buying this PS5 or this flat screen TV or, you know, stuff you don't need. Um, you know, each dollar you spend could be, it's not, it's not just like a $500 expense, that PS5. It's 500 times um, 32. It, you know, if you saved that money and invested it, it would have been worth, I'll, I'll just do the math, 500 times 32. $16,000. Shit, <laughs> man. So that's what you could have made if you didn't buy that PS5 and you invested that money and you didn't touch it for 40 years, right? I'm being a little bit idealistic, but this is, this is the real power that um, really should be taught in school. So let, let's talk about a more real world example because odds are you're gonna invest more than $1 um, in, in your life towards your, your retirement or your financial future, right? Um, and a, a very common number for that is $6,000 a year. 
uh, because that's the maximum you can contribute to a Roth IRA account. I'll explain what that is later as well. And that averages out to $500 a month. And let's take that same number. You're 20, you're 20, you're 20 years old. You, you cash out when you're 65, which again is the average age for retirement. We take this, uh, we take this 8% number that we got from Google. Uh, and this is just $500 a month. I think this is $500 a month is something everybody can conceptualize because you know, it's probably less than half the rent you pay every month for most of you. Um, and if you don't have $500 a month, you know, contribute whatever you can. Like I said, um, even if you invest $1, it'll, it'll have the same amount of growth. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty standard retirement plan, uh, but it works best if you start right now, as young as possible. And so if we calculate that, here we have it, your portfolio when you're 65, uh, will be worth 2.3 million, which is if you're, that's a good amount of money for retirement, uh, for a lot of different lifestyles. Uh, and by contrast, if you didn't invest the money at all, you just kept it in your checking account, that would be 270,000, which is not a lot um, for retirement sake. This is not in near enough money to live on from the time you're, you're 65 to 100 or 90 or whatever. Uh, especially if you factor in unexpected medical expenses and ex insurance costs or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it's literally the difference between Jazz Hero GoFundMe and a really, really healthy portfolio, right? This compound interest. Uh, and again, let's, let's say by contrast, you, you don't heed my advice today. Uh, you wait till you're married, you have kids, you're 35 and you're like, hey, maybe I should, I should start planning for my retirement. Um, so you, you invest from age 35 to age 65. You only get 30 years of growth. Here you have it, you have less than $700,000, which I know to a lot of young people, this seems like a lot of money. Um, but as far as the retirement profile concerned, I, I would say this is probably the bare minimum you really need to live, uh, live off of um, for the rest of your, your years, right? Uh, so this is a very important concept for musicians to know about. Uh, I'm not super passionate about personal finance or anything. I just really wish um, musicians had more money. I think this would help us in so many, so many different ways. We would be able to have more bargaining power with venues, with, um, with streaming companies, with labels, if we didn't need them so much, if we weren't so desperate and we had some level of comfort and financial freedom, um, it would just help us focus on our art, right? Uh, so what you need to do today, if you're 20 years, years old, is you need to open up a Roth IRA account um, or a traditional IRA. Um, the difference here is when you are taxed. Uh, IRA is an individual retirement account, as you can see. Uh, a traditional IRA, you, um, you don't pay taxes on the money you contribute to that account this year. Uh, so say you contribute $6,000 to your traditional IRA, you don't pay, you, you just deduct that from your taxes this year and then you pay taxes on it later on when you're retired and you're withdrawing the money uh, after the growth, um, you, you pay taxes on it. Um, by contrast, uh, a Roth IRA, you pay taxes on the 6,000 this year, it's, it, it's included in your income tax, right? Uh, and then you, you, you deposit it in your Roth IRA, you invest it in, in a strong index fund, like I said, and you aren't when you withdraw it when you're retired uh, you don't pay any taxes on it and that's going to be the smarter thing because you know think about it do you want to pay taxes on six thousand this year or six thousand times 32 45 years from now um obviously you, you're going to want to um i mean i'm sure there are advantages to others so you know if you really uh, are talking about a lot of money here i would really encourage you to talk to somebody very knowledgeable um, leave a comment, do your own research. Um, like I said, I'm not a financial prof professional. This is just the, the basics. And so where can you open up one of these accounts? There's tons, of, they're, they're called brokerages. Uh, the one I use is called Fidelity. Uh, oh, I don't wanna show you my money, I'm, I'm still logged in. Um, uh, because that's what my family uses, but there's, you know, uh, Charles Schwab and uh, Wells Fargo, you can do it with a bank, you can do it with, um, with lots of different services, Vanguard, um, yeah, just 
there's advantages and disadvantages all of them i i think the most important thing is that you open up account and you start investing right away uh less so this kind of nitty-gritty stuff and then the last thing i wanted to return to like what do you invested in um that is a can be a complicated question uh, depending on what your goals are but if you're doing this type of long-term investing ha super hands-off not checking it every day every week even probably once a quarter or or even even you don't even, you don't even have to because if you're if you're invested for the long term like i said you're going to grow uh, that's a historical guarantee uh what you need to do the 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 you need to put your money in the s p 500 this is a index fund of the top 500 companies in the united states uh there's other index funds that are very similar uh vanguard vanguard index funds they they, they all pretty mu much are the same thing uh vanguard in index funds are very popular they have their own s and vanguard 500 index they also have um a dividend fund for people who want to make more money um, on uh, as they go, uh, but that you know th this is all a topic for another time. The important thing is that you understand what compound interest is. You understand the urgency which with you which with you need to utilize it with, and what type of account you need to open to start doing that today. So be well. Um, wishing you guys all uh, good health through all this time and le let me know in the comments below if I missed anything or if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much.